Chapter 1231 Mystic Well Everyone was talking about the subject, but no real results were coming of the discussions. Assaulting St. Fan Shelter preemptively would have to be done differently than their attack on Thunderhell Shelter. St. Fan Shelter was a mysterious construct, and it was encircled by a moat. The night cloak could not be used to breach the place without being seen. No one knew where the spirit hall was, either, so it'd probably be quite difficult to locate in the midst of an attack. After fighting Thunder Hell Emperor, Hansen had learned a thing or two about proper emperor behavior, though. For one, he now knew they were willing to kill themselves quickly, and they'd respawn at an alarmingly fast rate. Whatever Hansen and his companions chose to do, trying to conquer a shelter such as that was going to prove tough. But the talks were interrupted by the sudden sound of an explosion that rattled the entire shelter, causing the ground to cough up plumes of dust. Hansen's face changed immediately, and so he ran to the source of the sound with the others in tow. Hansen came before a well in the garden, which was cascading water. It had flooded the ground of the garden, and it was one foot deep already. Bauer was near the well, with Snowball quivering behind her. Are you okay? Hansen asked the baby, but she seemed to be totally fine. I'm good, Bauer said. What happened here? Hansen asked, indicating to the water that was flooding the place. Bauer pointed at Snowball and said, I threw him in the well. Big boom. He flies out. Is that true? Hansen asked Snowball. Snowball nodded gently. Hansen tried peering into the well, but he could see nothing in its depths. All that seemed to be there was water. Hansen picked up Snowball and dropped him in the well again. Snowball summoned the white ball to protect himself and fell inside. Ping. While Snowball was sinking down into the dark depths of the well, there was another sudden explosion. In response, Snowball was fired back out of the well like a cannonball. The garden was flooded even more, following this. Snowball quickly ran back over to Bauer and in behind her. It looked to be absolutely terrified. Well, 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 this sure is one peculiar well. Hansen tried looking down into the well again, and he did not see any clues that might explain what had occurred. The well had seemingly spat out Snowball by its own volition. Let me take a look, Water Fairy said, as she hovered near the well. Okay, but be careful. Hansen nodded. She was a water super creature, so if anything else was going to plunge into the aquatic mystery, there was none more suited to do so than her. Oh, you care for my well-being? Thank you. Water Fairy smiled at Hansen and then dove into the well. The Water Fairy did not create another explosion, and she was able to blend in with the rest of the water that filled the well. Hansen watched her go, relieved that what happened to Snowball did not happen to her. Hansen stood on the well looking down, but eventually, he lost sight of her and could not see what was going on at the bottom. All of a sudden, the sound of thunder boomed. Hansen quickly fell back, but he was surprised to see nothing actually happen this time. Hansen inched his way back to the well and saw the water begin to bubble, as if it were coming to a boil. Where did that thunder noise come from? Ghost I asked, as he too approached the well. The thunder sounded again, but this time continuously, and slowly, the volume grew and grew. Inside the well, there was no lightning or anything. The water was only moving a little, so where it might have come from was difficult to discern. Is there a place below the well, perhaps? Hansen frowned as he mulled the curiosity. Xia Qing King now came near, and his flip-flops. He prepared to dive in after Water Fairy, saying, Let this seaworthy ombre take a look. No, you don't have to. Let's wait and see if Water Fairy returns. Hansen wasn't sure what was down there, and if there was a trap, it'd be silly to send his troops in one after one. Nothing in the third god's sanctuary can stop a dude like me. Come on, son, you know I'm unstoppable. You're saying a well can get the better of me? Siat Ching King scoffed at the desire for safety, and he looked ready to jump in. Splash! The sudden sound shocked them all, and it was Water Fairy who had come back out. Are you okay? Hansen swiftly asked her. Water Fairy, after regaining her balance, said, I'm fine but I did stumble across something interesting down there. Well, you have my curiosity. Now, you have my attention, Xia Qin King said, as if speaking to the actual stone of the well. Water Fairy directed her gaze to Hansen, saying, it would be better if you followed me. Okay, then. Let's go take a look, Hansen said, leaning over the side of the well. Before going in, Water Fairy said, this water is sky pure water. If anything dirty or pure goes inside, 
it'll be rejected like filth, like that mangy mutt you've adopted. But for yourself, don't worry, I can protect you and let you in. Water Fairy then turned her attention to the rest of the crowd and said, Don't come in after us, okay? If you do, you will hurt Master and I. After that, Water Fairy became a floating spring of water. It circled around Hansen and grabbed him tight. Then it picked him up and brought him into the well. Hansen began to descend through the water of the well, and the further he went down, the wider the structure of the well became. Before long, Hansen noticed he was at a depth of 1,000 meters. And then, Suddenly, Hansen saw something bright in front of him. Chapter 1232, Lightning Stone In the well, there was a flickering bolt of lightning. It was different from normal lightning, and the end of the bolt seemed to be stemming from something solid. It was a blue stone. The blue stone was like crystal, and he could see lightning inside and out of it. The lightning was strange, though. Each flash only illuminated a small portion of the area around the stone. Outside of its immediate proximity was darkness and nothing more. If Hansen had not been led as close as he was now, he wouldn't have been able to make it out in that stifling darkness. Water Fairy had generated a bubble for Hansen to sit within, so he could breathe and talk underwater. What is this thing? Hansen asked as he pointed towards the lightning stone. The lightning stone was very large, around the size of a house. Curiously, there were many holes in its exterior that could provide Hansen access. Water Fairy entered the bubble and took Han Sin's arm, saying, I'm not sure what it is, but it sure seems to be brimming with power, don't you think? Be careful going close, though, as the holes occasionally beam with the lightning. It won't leave the confines of the crystal as long as it's undisturbed, thankfully. You most probably heard the sound of thunder outside, did you not? It was that, like an explosive exhaust of lightning and thunder. Show me how to trigger the light show, Hansen said. Water Fairy nodded and waved her hand, then a wave of water went towards the stone. When her water touched the stone, blue lightning spat out from its holes. The lightning lashed out like hungry vines, which then wrapped around the exterior of the stone and produced a thunderous roar. When the water came into contact with the lightning, the wave was broken. When the water was gone, the lightning began to calm and go back to its simmering status as if nothing had transpired. Hansen looked at the stone with a hearty mixture of surprise and fervent inquisitiveness. It was strong, but it did not show signs of possessing a life force. The lightning seemed to be genuine. If it was just lightning, though, why would it have the awareness to prevent something from approaching? You said the water wouldn't allow the presence of dirt. So how is this stone here in the water? Hansen asked. Water Fairy frowned and said, Normally, sky pure water cannot contain dirt. And if an item that is unclean is present, the sky pure water displaces both the unclean item and the water surrounding the item. It really is strange, even to me, that this lightning stone is here in the midst of the water. Hansen observed the stone a bit more and then told her, Take me closer. Water Fairy responded to this with shock, and she quickly exclaimed, But that lightning is so strong, I don't think we can withstand it. I only want to get a closer peek. That's it. Take me there. And if I can't withstand it, then you can pull me back. Hansen smiled. I won't disappoint you, Water Fairy said with renewed confidence. She looked happy, and then she took the bubble closer to the danger zone. Hansen used his Dongshin aura to simulate Thunder Hell Emperor's black lightning, wanting to see if he could get right into the stone. There could be a treasure inside, one that belonged to Thunder Hell. If that was the case, Hansen thought the lightning would only acknowledge the presence of the now deceased spirit, and a simulation of his power would be the next best thing. When the bubble got closer, though, the stone began to spew blue lightning to seal off each point of entry possible. The bubble connected with one whip of lightning and immediately broke. In response, Hansen turned and struck the blue lightning with the black lightning he now commanded. Ping. The reaction was not what Hansen expected, and he was literally shocked. The electricity that coursed through him was excruciatingly painful, and it sent him flying backward. Fortunately, Water Fairy managed to catch him with another bubble. If she hadn't, he'd have been blasted back out of the well. Hansen looked at his hand, noticing the presence of blue lightning flickering across it. The black lightning was no match, it seemed. Strange. There doesn't seem to be any association between the blue and black lightning. Was it just my simulation that failed? Did the stone fail to recognize me as Thunderhell? Hansen thought to himself. His hand still jolted with the presence of lightning that was still there, and every time it sparked, a new mark was left. 
it started to make Hansen feel numb. Opting to try something else, Hansen decided to simulate the silver fox's lightning. He was intrigued by the stone, and he really wanted to get rid of the blue lightning that was inhibiting his examinations and possible treasure collection. And with the silver lightning, the breakthrough he was looking for was achieved. The blue lightning moved away from Hans Senator. It seemed as if the cords of blue were afraid of the silver lightning that Hansen had created. Master, the blue lightning is retreating. It is returning back to the stone, as if it is afraid of something, Water Fairy said. Take me back to the hole again. Hansen hadn't expected the silver fox's abilities to have such far-reaching positive effects. Hansen did notice that Thunderhell's lightning was different than the silver fox's. Thunderhell's lightning was all about pure destruction and the taking of lives. The silver fox was about saving lives instead. It could be used to heal others, after all. The blue lightning was afraid of little silver's lightning, or at least, that was what Hansen guessed. Water Fairy delivered him to the stone as he had requested, and when Hansen reached it, the hole had already begun building up a discharge to lash and keep him away. In response, Hansen summoned his silver lightning again, which made the blue lightning retreat. Hansen was delighted, and this really was the result he was looking for. He told Water Fairy to wait where she was while he jumped into the hole that the silver lightning had opened. Chapter 1233 Emperor Treasure The entry point was not submerged in sky pure water, but was dry as land instead. Veiling himself in a cloak of silver lightning, Hansen proceeded forward as the blue lightning cowered away from him. The hole was the perfect size for one person to go through. As he felt his way through, it was practically a tunnel, complete with its own twists and turns. After traversing as far as he could, he eventually reached the bottom. There was nothing particularly special about the way he had gone, and it was just as he had seen it from the outside. Inside the stone was a semicircular space, and each hole had an exit point that led into that place. Hansen saw a small tree inside, growing in a pot. The tree was 30 centimeters tall, and it looked like a small coconut tree. The strangest thing about it was that the tree seemed to have been forged from actual electricity or lightning. Its appearance was not too dissimilar to that of a plasma ball. There were three blue fruits growing on the electric branches of the tree, but weirdly, each fruit had something within it. The three lightning fruit each held something different. The highest of the trio had a knight in armor sitting inside as blue lightning flickered around him. The knight was wearing armor and a helmet, though, so Hansen could not see its face. He could not even see its eyes. The left fruit had a hammer inside it. Its shape was fairly unremarkable, and it looked like an average blacksmith's hammer, aside from the blue lightning that crackled around the head. It also had the symbol of lightning forged on it. The right fruit had a hand. It was white and pristine, with beautiful, untarnished nails. In the palm of the hand was another lightning symbol. Hansen felt strange as he looked upon them. The plant was growing three wholly different items. The fruits were not yet mature, but the life forces of the tree and its fruit were frighteningly powerful. There was no doubt in Hansen's mind that he had stumbled across treasure belonging to an emperor spirit. But if they were Geno weapons, why would a knight and a hand be growing inside the fruits? They could have been creatures but the idea of a creature that had the form of a hammer was bewildering. Hansen might not have been able to tell what they were right now, but whatever would come from them had to be good. There was a reason why Thunderhell Emperor had gone to such great lengths to hide the tree beneath a well submerged in sky pure water. Whatever these are, they'll be awesome when they're mature. I should help boost its growth. You can't find an emperor plan every day, after all. Hansen summoned his black crystal and bestowed a number of drops upon the tree. He examined the fruit the fruit one last time, and he got giddy as he wondered how good the items would be. If there be souls, that'd be terrific. Imagine if they were Berserk Super Class. Hansen thought to himself. Hansen decided to summon Dragon King. He was a knowledgeable fellow on a great number of subjects, so there was a chance he could shed some more light on what was growing on the tree. Do you know what this is? Hansen said. Dragon King, seeing the mini tree, looked shocked. He went around it to observe it carefully, saying, how very peculiar. This should be a lightning emperor geno plant, correct? It is strange how the things inside don't look very electric. Excuse me? The stuff inside isn't lightning? Hansen frowned in a pause, before continuing on to say, you must be mistaken. You are, aren't you? The items inside even have the symbol of lightning emblazoned across them. Dragon King explained, 
I have hundreds of thousands of years of experience. Trust me, I am not mistaken when I tell you that whatever is inside that tree is not lightning. Then, can you explain? Hansen asked, frowning. Dragon King looked at the fruit and said, I can't be sure about the hand and the hammer, but I know for sure everything you'd need to know about the night. Okay, go on. I'm listening. Hansen gestured for him to proceed. Dragon King laughed and said, I used to grow those. It's a super beast soul, and it goes by the name Twin Knight. Twin Knight? But there is only one of them. Hansen found it hard to believe they were twins. Before you spirits sign a contract with humans, you can't use beast souls. Isn't that right? Hansen said. Dragon King balked and said, No, it wasn't for me. It was for my man, Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight? You had someone to ride you? Hansen looked at Dragon King with shock. Dragon King's face turned green, and he explained, No, it's not like that. Dragon Knights are knights with dragon blood. They are powerful super creatures, actually, not too far off your disloyal knight. I had a whole battalion of them at one point. You had a whole battalion to ride you? You are good. Hansen laughed and went on to say, Anyway, keep going. What is the twin knight? The twin knight be soul should grow on the twin tree. I had them, and I was going to use a twin knight to combine with my favorite dragon knight, so he could act as a leader. But something went wrong with the tree, and it died. You know how it goes. But I am telling you, this is identical to my twin knight. And believe me, I am as perplexed as you about why it is growing on a lightning tree. Dragon King looked genuinely confused. You still haven't told me what it does, Hansen said, looking directly at him. Dragon King laughed and said, Oh, that is simple. It can possess other knights and have powers opposite to what it currently has. Does that mean if a knight has a fire element and it is possessed, it will instead use an ice element? Hansen asked. No, it is extra. As in, you can use ice and fire together, Dragon King explained. Hansen was delighted with the treasure he had stumbled across. He thought that item would be a terrific gain for him. If disloyal knight used it, he wondered, what would his powers become? Chapter 1234 Saint Fan is Coming Dragon King thought the Geno plant would still take another 40 years to mature, so that meant 40 days for Hans Sin and his water drops. In 40 days, he could obtain the items it was going to yield. He still wasn't sure what the hand or the hammer items were, but Dragon King seemed certain that the knight was a twin knight, despite the peculiarity of it being born on this tree. Hansen didn't want to leave empty handed, though. He wanted to wait there until the fruit could mature. Hansen moved the underground shelter to a well-hidden place not too far from Thunderhell Shelter. If they were unable to defend Thunderhell Shelter, when the not-so-far-away hostiles came to attack, they could retreat to the underground shelter and make a daring escape. Hansen left the well and told Water Fairy to keep an eye on it and make sure no one intruded. He then went to one of the palaces in the shelter to do some reading. Hansen wanted to figure out what manner of information the Xi'an Min fellow had given him. He had already had it translated into the modern language, so now he could read it all with simplicity. There was info regarding the Xi'an Tian technique, on which the Dongxian Sutra had been based. The Xi'an Tian technique was good, but it was quite different than the finalized Dongxian Sutra. The Xi'an Tian technique was the original skill, but the Dongxian Sutra had been created by Dongxian Zi after he broke through the vacuum. Hansen decided to learn the Xian Tian technique while applying what he had learned through his time with the Dong Xian Sutra. There was a lot Hansen would be able to learn from it, despite it not being in its entirely original format. The Xian Tian technique was ancient, and over the ages, parts of it had been modified. Hansen learned a lot from it, and he noticed that many hypergeno arts could be easily blended with it. Hansen selected one to practice with and used the Dong Xian Sutra as a base. He was still able to use a hypergeno art that had been combined with the Xian Tian technique. He didn't have much time though. So, Hansen only picked one, thinking he could use it against Saint Fan if he ever had to fight him. Hansen decided to practice a skill called Shuanmi movement, which had its origins based on Xian Tian movement. Dong Xian movement was based on Xian Tian movement as well. But Dong Xian movement had been modified a lot for the Dong Xian Sutra, making it a much greater fit. Shuami movement was terrific, and it was very adaptable in how it could combine with modern skills. Hansen used Shuami movement with Dong Shin movement to try it out, and he found it to be rather easy. In less than two days, he had already become proficient with it. After a while, 
Hansen also finished going through the information provided to him by Professor Long. After reclining back to think through what he had read, Hansen finally thought he had figured out a way in which he could combine speeding up time and teleportation. But for this, he would have to start creating a brand new hypergeno art. Speeding up time and teleportation? This could actually work, Hansen said to himself. Hansen continued his research for the next few days, and he stayed away from the Alliance in case St. Fan showed up. Half a month passed with no sign of an enemy force. The Emperor Tree in the Well had not yet matured, either. Ghost Eye, however, came running back to the shelter in a strange panic. St. Fan is here. Drybone translated what Ghost Eye had to say, amidst his panting. When Hansen heard, he raced out of his room to prepare. Everyone else abandoned what they were doing and went to join him. Queen and Zero were the only humans there, as the rest were in the underground shelter. For a fight like this, most humans would be little more than cannon fodder. What do we face? Baby Ghost asked. He had managed to open three gene locks after starting from scratch, but he was still in no condition to fight what now faced them. Ghost I was making a noise, pointing at something in the distance. He had very good eyesight, which was why Hansen selected him as a scout. Drybone King translated what he had to say again. St. Fan, with his army in tow, is 500 miles away. He has seen five super creatures and three king spirits accompanying him. But to pad out the forces, swathes of smaller creatures have come, too. With the emperor himself showing his face, do you think we should fall back? Drybone King added the last sentence himself, as he doubted their strength in repelling such a foe. If his father had failed to defeat St. Fan Emperor, there was no chance he could. What you afraid of, son? We haven't got nothing to fear. We've got the greater hand here, Xie Qin King said, as he puffed on a cigar. He is an emperor. Realistically, now would be the time for us to go. We can always come back. Living to fight another day sounds worthwhile to me, Baby Ghost said. Water Fairy chimed in to say, you should stop arguing and just do whatever our master tells us. Everyone turned to look at Han Sr. These colors don't run. I'm fighting, no matter what. But that doesn't mean I'm without an escape plan, if things truly turn awry. If their forces are overwhelming, we can return to the underground shelter, Hansen said. Hansen did not want to lose the Emperor Tree just yet, and the last thing he wanted was for an Emperor to easily claim the goodies he himself had fought to obtain. Hansen could deal with the King's spirits and super creatures without much issue. It was the Emperor himself that presented the problem. He wasn't sure how he'd muster what it would take to bring the Emperor down. Ordinary King's spirits could not fight him, and Purple Emperor wasn't a true Emperor yet, either. Purple Emperor can fight with my Berserk Gold Ravenby's soul and I myself have Super King Spirit Mode and Little Angel. All hope is not lost, and at the very least, fleeing will remain a viable option. I can escape whenever I wish, Hansen mulled to himself. Chapter 1235, Power of Holy Rhino Hansen had decided to stay and fight. He brought all his spirits and super creatures outside of the shelter to battle upon the fields. He didn't want to risk the construct of Thunder Hell Shelter getting destroyed. After walking a few dozen miles, he and his companions caught sight of the enemy spirits and creatures approaching. The spirit that led the host was clad in black armor that masked his face. A subtle, dark glow shimmered around the being. He looked like an ancient deity, but Hansen knew exactly who he was. That was Saint Fan, whom he had seen in the Second God's Sanctuary. The spirit hadn't changed much. Saint Fan Emperor was sitting upon the Holy Rhino, which looked as strong as ever. It glowed with a holy light, acting as a beacon for the army to follow. What Hansen had seen, when the holy rhino ascended to the third god's sanctuary, was still one of the most incredible sights he had ever witnessed. It was something Hansen thought was insane. And now, over the time of its existence in the third god's sanctuary, it had been looked after well by Saint Fan Emperor, as it had opened nine gene locks already. Besides Saint Fan Emperor, there were three king spirits and a few super creatures. Behind the leading line was an army of spirits and creatures, all of varying types, sizes, and shapes. A few of the creatures looked familiar, as they were the spirits and creatures that had escaped from Thunderhell Shelter. Hansen frowned, noticing this. If Saint Fan had the creatures from Thunderhell Shelter, he would know everything about the place. He was coming fully prepared, and there were very few trump cards Hansen had left to play. When Saint Fan recognized Hansen, a visible look of shock fell across his face. He said, Human, 
It was you who killed Thunder Hell Emperor and claimed his shelter? Yes, Hansen answered as he sat upon Golden Growler, eschewing all possible feelings of apprehension. Saint Fan smiled and said, I left a mark on you, did I not? I had hoped to have you come to my shelter, but that mare replaced it. Lotus claimed you, did she not? Not that it matters, because you will be mine once more. Saint Fan made it sound like he'd soon expect a grovel-like bow by Hansen, and he'd have no trouble getting a submission from him. Hansen was aware of how he was making it sound, so Hansen said, I'm not so sure about that. In fact, it might be the opposite. Perhaps later, it will be you who belongs to me. Seeing Saint Fan there, though, made his mind drift to wonder what power the spirits possessed that allowed them to return to a previous shelter and escort creatures through. If Hansen could do this, he thought he'd be able to bring his mother to the third god sanctuary. Saint Fan Emperor looked miffed, and he responded to Hansen by saying, you might be able to steal Thunder Hell's spirit stone, but the talent that enabled that is useless against a being as magnificent as I. Get on your knees, and you can return to the shelter with your comrades. All deals will be off the table once swords ring, knuckles fly, and bones break. Talking with this fool is pointless, yo. Let's kill him. Siat Chin King did not wait, and with a gleam of silver light, he took off running towards the enemy. Siat Chin King's power was similar to that of Han Sin's Super King Spirit Mode. That being said, it wasn't as effective. Seeing Siat Chin King come, Saint Fan did not seem to care. It was a king spirit that had come running out to fight. After all, Siat Chin King ran before a king spirit of the enemy and unleashed a barrage of punches. The enemy's fists were very quick, and they were able to repel every single hit. The enemy's fists were like shields. Pang. Siat Chin King punched a little harder and broke the fist shield. Then, another salvo of punches was unleashed. The king spirit didn't seem to care much about the punches it was being delivered, though, and it sought to launch a punch of its own at Siat Chin King's head. Fortunately, his power did not match Siat Chin King's power. With a boost, Siat Chin King's fist was driven into the enemy spirit's chest while the enemy spirit's punch was thrown into Xie Qing King's head. A hole was smashed into the king spirit's body as Xie Qing King's fist ripped clean through. And when the king spirit's own fist came into contact with Xie Qing King, it did nothing. The power seemed to have been nullified when it came into contact with the silver light that veiled Xie Qing King. Get back to me once you practice the art of punching walls for a hundred thousand years in a dreadfully boring incarceration, matey, Xie Qing King said. Everyone, witnessing Xie Qing King's coolness and ferociousness in taking the fight to the enemy, were given the hope they needed, but had struggled to find before now. Saint Fan didn't care much for his subordinate's death, though, as the holy rhino's horn began to shine. Immediately, the spirit Xie Qing King had thought to have killed stood up and healed back to full health. Our fight is not over, the king's spirit cackled. Xie Qing King frowned, and he looked to be filled with a murderous rage. He approached the king's spirit again. To this, Saint Fan waved his hand, a command to the rest of his companions to begin fighting. Seeing Saint Fan not want to fight himself, Hansen responded by commanding Purple Emperor and the rest to deal with the army. The opponent only had seven king class elites with him, while Saint Fan and the rhino stayed out of the fighting. Purple Emperor, Xie Qin King, and Little Angel were very strong, and they were swiftly able to take control of the battleground. But Hansen soon found out that this was pointless. The Holy Rhino was able to heal all the forces that were beaten down, making it impossible to keep the dead, dead. It is no wonder they are not afraid to die. Injuries don't stick, Hansen told himself, while frowning. Alu alu alu. Siat Chin King's fists were like a couple of silver suns now, as they pummeled the daylight out of the spirit in front of him again. He had torn through every shield and beaten the spirit into a wretched, mangled mess on the floor, ready to be smashed. Chapter 1236, Not Dying and Not Hurting The rhino's horn was shining brightly, and that same light was now caressing the crumpled king spirit. Xie Qin King did not relent in his pummeling of the spirit, but no matter what he did, it just wouldn't give up the ghost. Pang. This time, when the spirit was able to get up, it punched Xie Qin King in the face, making his nose bleed. And it wasn't only Xie Qin King having to deal with such a predicament. Ghost Eye, Blue Dinosaur, and Dry Bone were also at this same disadvantage. Disloyal Knight's Halo had the ability to weaken others, 
but Saint Fan's army was practically invincible. They did not fear death, either. So a reduction in damage output or reduction of defense durability on their part meant nothing. That being said, the wounds would stay on the broken enemies, which meant their effectiveness in battle gradually reduced the more they were beaten. Holy Rhino is good. It is no wonder Saint Fan values it so highly and has allowed it to level up so high, Hansen thought, as he readied himself to attack the Rhino and Saint Fan Emperor. Hansen needed to get rid of the duo, as victory did not seem a likely outcome if they were still in play. But before Hansen struck, Xie Qing King barked something across the battlefield. The scary silver light that had enveloped him made him look like a terrifying foe. Hansen was a great distance away from him at this point, but he could feel the immense power Xie Qing King was about to deploy. It made the hair on the back of his neck stand on end. Seeing the king's spirit rise again, Xie Qing King had definitely had enough. He screamed. Die. The fists came thick and fast, one wall up after another, wrecking the body of the king's spirit. The heat of the silver fist then melted its body into thick, bubbling tar as it was beaten back into a rocky cliffside. Like a mechanical drill, Xie Qing King pummeled him through the rock as if he was merrily digging a tunnel. After the silver light dimmed, the body of the king's spirit was shown to have disappeared. It had been vaporized. Even after respawning another 10,000 times, you'll never have what it takes to beat me. Xie Qing King hollered as he drew a pair of sunshades and slid them into his face. As cool as he tried to play it, though, Hansen knew Xie Qing King was sweating. That attack had cost Xie Qing King a lot of energy. Still, the fact that he had destroyed a king's spirit into actual nothingness was scary. Hansen said to him, Brother Xie, you rock. If the body was gone, the rhino couldn't heal it. But Saint Fan Emperor waved his hand, and then, a weird light appeared. This light was sent towards Xie Qing King. Boom. The light broke and diminished returning the king spirit in front of Xie Qing King unharmed and free from wounds. Seeing this, Xie Qing King's face changed. Hansen now knew why his opponents really weren't afraid of death. Even if they couldn't be healed, resurrection was only a hand flick away. Hansen summoned Purple Emperor and then became a Berserk Gold Raven. Together, the duo win a battle saint fan. Hansen used the Gold Raven because he could not yet use Ancient Devil Soldier. The Raven had Berserk powers too, so it was bound to be effective against the Emperor. Seeing Hansen and Purple Emperor approach, Saint Fan didn't move much. He just remained where was, comfy upon the rhino. He didn't seem to be afraid of anything. When they approached, Saint Fan lifted his hands and managed to grab them both with ease. The talons of the raven and the purple sword were grabbed by Saint Fan with no trouble. Hansen and Purple Emperor could not escape the wretched grip he had on him. Saint Fan was a twisted devil, and he started to smack the two puppets in his hands together, getting them to hit each other repeatedly. Drybone King said Saint Fan could make the flesh of two creatures merge together, and these words stuck with Hansen all too well. The last thing he was going to do was allow that. Hansen flapped his wings and managed to writhe out of the Emperor's grip, leaving a few scratch marks on his hands as he slipped free. Purple Emperor, seeing an opportunity now arise, let the sword go jumped on Saint Fan's head, and used another beam blade to strike him. Dong! 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 The purple beam struck against the armor a few times, but it was futile. Only the exposed skin was susceptible to damage. But as soon as wounds appeared on Saint Fan's skin, they were immediately healed. You'd miss it if you blinked. Are emperors always this strong? Hansen used his phoenix techniques to repeatedly hit Saint Fan while trying to avoid getting grabbed again. Purple Emperor continued using his blades of light to strike their ultimate foe, but Saint Fan didn't even seem concerned. He sat upon the rhino, unmoved. It was almost as if he didn't want to stop the two from hitting him. There might only be one gene lock gap, but it's a nearly unbridgeable chasm. Nine gene locks is so weak, in comparison. Hansen thought the extra, tenth gene lock made all the difference in the world. Purple Emperor had ten gene locks open. But due to the lack of sufficient nutrition during its birth, its power was not all that different from Hansen's. But they were also individual, and Hansen could not combine with Purple Emperor as he could with Little Angel. They still managed to hold Saint Fan back, but it didn't make much of a difference for those down on the battlefield. Slowly but surely, the tides were turning, and they were not doing well. Even Xie Qing King had been injured quite a bit by this point. Chapter 1237 
Fighting Saint fan. Dry Bone King looked dismayed, but it was no surprise. He was talented with the heart bone, and he could break the hearts of his enemies in their chests, but it wouldn't be long before they were back on their feet. The dismay came as no surprise, for they were all fighting unbeatable foes. Xie Qing King's heart had sunk even lower, though. He could kill any king spirit there he desired, but they'd each be resurrected in no time. Little Angel's great sword continued to hack down the super creatures she went up against. But whenever she beheaded an opponent, the head would soon roll up and get stitched back on. No matter how powerful they were, fighting was a useless uphill struggle against enemies that couldn't be destroyed. The only ones making genuine progress on the battlefield were Thorn Queen and Water Fairy. Thorn Queen was able to use vines to trap and subdue creatures. Even if they could be healed, beneath the nasty entrapment of thorny ropes, they were out of the game. Water Fairy had a similar move, but she used water bubbles to encase and suffocate enemies. Siachin King broke another foe's head, but lo and behold, it respawned the next second. He turned around, picked up Snowball, who was idly spectating by the side, and threw it towards the arisen King Spirit. The King Spirit used his shield to block, but it was quickly broken by Siachin King, allowing Snowball to get in close. Snowball squealed and flashed with a white light, which momentarily blinded the king's spirit. The spirit felt as if it had been a victim of a hundred flashbang grenades, and it felt as if his world was spinning amidst the blinding light. Haha. Uh -huh. Brains before brawn. You numpty. Xie Qing King called to the ball Snowball had trapped the king's spirit within, and then kicked it away like a corner kick. The ball hit a nearby wall with terrible force, and it bounced all the way back to Xie Qing King. With a smile, he was happy to comply and kick it back once more. Xie Qing King looked as if he was actually having fun, playing soccer by himself. Brother Xie Qing, help. Dry Bone King suddenly called from across the field. His bone heart was useless, and close quarter combat was where Dry Bone King was least proficient. Even baby ghosts could not do odd for him. Ping. The white ball was kicked away by Xie Qing King, one last time with frightening power. It drilled through a cliffside and became lodged deep inside. Coming. Xie Qing King grabbed Snowball and ran over to the monster that was harassing Drybone King. To make use of Snowball, he had to get in close. But that could be difficult if the opponent knew what to expect. So, Xie Qing King just charged towards it and punched the foe to knock it off balance. The silver light broke the molten lava casing that protected the monster. And then, Xie Qing King shoved Snowball onto the fiery beast. Snowball flashed white again, trapping the monster inside another white ball. Xie Qing King immediately kicked the white ball away, as if to score a penalty kick. Saint Fan had become aware of what Xie Qing King was doing now, and when he saw him run towards another creature, he frowned. They had found a way to get around his healing and resurrection expertise. Seeing Xie Qing King continue going about this, Saint Fan disengaged Han Sen and went towards the Trixie and ill-dressed spirit. Swiftly, he managed to snatch Snowball away from Xie Qing King. Saint Fan Emperor knew the fluffy little creature could end up tipping the scales of the battle. Good timing. Xie Qing King flashed with a silver light, then took the opportunity to punch Saint Fan. Ping. Xie Qing King put all his strength into that punch, and he managed to rocket his fist through Saint Fan's armor and body. Hansen was delighted to see this. So he and Purple Emperor leaped onto the dazed Emperor to deal more damage and kill him before he could recover. Hansen's talon shredded Saint Fan's wounds into gnarly bits as Purple Emperor slashed the wound from another side. He looked as if he was going to be ripped apart, but Saint Fan smiled as if he couldn't care less. All three of them suddenly had a bad feeling. Xie Qing King's arm, Hansen's talons, and Purple Emperor's sword suddenly became a part of Saint Fan's renewed flesh. He had healed with the three of them connected to him. Oh, no. Hansen wished to pull his talons away, but he felt great pain in doing so, as if he was trying to tear his own arm off. Xie Qing King was the same, too. But fortunately, Purple Emperor was able to let go of his sword and fall back for a moment. What is this sick SH asterisk T? Xie Qing King looked incredibly angry, and he repeatedly pummeled Saint Fan's head. Saint Fan didn't attempt to dodge, though, and he just let this occur. It was strange, because eventually, Xie Qing King's fist penetrated his skull and battered Saint Fan's brain. But the next second, it made sense, and it made Xie Qing King look even worse. 
the head of Saint Fan healed, trapping Xie Qing King's hand inside his brain. Xie Qing King wished to pull his hand away, but he felt a headache come on. It prompted him to start sweating profusely. Chapter 1238 Dangerous Han Sen's face was not looking good. If you touched Saint Fan Emperor's body, your limbs could sink and become one with him, and any subsequent hits meant bringing damage to yourself. This was what had occurred to them. Saint Fan Emperor did not feel any pain. And amidst all this, he smiled and said, Xie Qing King, that is a name not unfamiliar to me. I heard of the power you wielded back when I was first born. I must say, the claims of your talents are overrated. Saint Fan threw a fist to punch Xie Qing King's belly. Xie Qing King had one of his hands in Saint Fan's chest, and his other was lodged inside his opponent's head. There was nothing he could do to dodge. Saint Fan Emperor's fist began to boil with an eerie silver light, as if he was absorbing Xie Qing King's power. Pang, pang. Saint Fan's fists, imbued with silver light, began to pummel Xie Qing King repeatedly until his chest caved in. Hansen was shocked, thinking they really had become a part of Saint Fan. And now, Saint Fan could make use of their powers. Watching Saint Fan punch Xie Qing King, Hansen tried to throw fire at the wretched spirit to end the madness. But Saint Fan knocked away the approaching fire, and he did not allow his fist to stop there. The fist went onwards to punch Hansen in the head, making him suffer a great deal of pain. D asterisk him in it. Hansen wanted to activate his Super King Spirit Mode, but just as he resolved to, he heard a barking sound. Snowball had snuck behind Saint Fan, and with his ability to trap beings inside white spheres, it tried to do the same to the spirit. It worked, but Hansen and Xie Qing King were trapped inside, too. Good job, Snowball. Hansen thought trapping the spirit would be the best course of action, first and foremost. Woof. Snowball barked. But their new glimmer of hope was brief, and their faces soon became grim once more. Saint Fan was able to throw his fist through the previously thought to be indestructible skin of the White Sphere. A ball that could withstand the number 16 of saving money had been broken in a single punch by Saint Fan. Saint Fan's body exited the ball, with it attached to his back. Everything and everyone can become a part of me, and all control can be submitted to me, Saint Fan proclaimed. Snowball barked and ran off jumping into a sphere of his own in the process. What a wimp, Xie Qing King said. Hansen found it funny that Xie Qing King had initially believed Snowball had saved their lives. Saint Fan then threw a punch towards Hansen, with another fist that had been imbued with a silver light. Hansen knew how strong Xie Qing King was, and he knew full well if Saint Fan was going to place all his strength in that punch, he'd be dead in the next couple of seconds. But he was stuck and unable to go anywhere. He had no choice but to brace for impact and accept the incoming hit. Pang. Hansen grabbed his other talon and slashed Saint Fan Emperor's waist, but it was only one last, futile attempt of trying to get away. It really was impossible to get free. But then, the Purple Emperor appeared. He hadn't wished to attack because he didn't want to deal damage to Hansen as he attacked Saint Fan. Saint Fan's punch met with Hansen, and it hurt. He then punched Xie Qing King, and repeatedly, Saint Fan continued to beat them both black, blue, and bloody. Hansen knew he had to think of something, and that this couldn't be allowed to go on much longer. Now, he had no choice but to use Super King Spirit Mode. Hansen returned from his Triple Talon Gold Raven status, but he noticed his arms were still attached to Saint Fan. Hansen did not know if Super King Spirit Mode would allow him an escape, but he did know he had to try. If the likelihood of death seemed strong, he might as well do all he could after all. And currently, Drybone King was not faring too well in battle. Snowball had managed to imprison two of the creatures that had attacked him, but there were still five more to go. With the tide not changing, things had to drastically improve for everyone, if they were going to achieve victory. Thorn Queen was still capable of trapping enemies, but the vines wouldn't hold them forever, and it was only a matter of time before they could indeed escape. Snowball ran over to Bower and cowered behind her back not wanting to move. It was not like anyone could break his sphere and force him out, either. Qin Jun tried to grab hold of Snowball and go around the field with him, as he was an invaluable asset in trapping the super creatures and king spirits that dominated the field of battle. Its nerves had been rattled so much, though, that did not seem likely to happen. Bawa held her gourd and looked at the chaos before her, and particularly at Han Sen and Saint Fan. 
She wished to make use of the item, but she was afraid of bringing harm to Han Senator. She was also unsure whether or not she could truly suck St. Fan into the gourd. Regardless of what was going on, Hansen was now determined to do things his way. He was going to activate Super King Spirit Mode and combine with Little Angel. Hansen only needed to get his hands free, so he could escape. But before he could become a Super King Spirit, a long howling sound came from a nearby forest. Something scary was quickly headed their way. Hansen was shocked, thinking they were reinforcements belonging to Saint Fan. After all, Hansen had brought everyone and there was no one else who could come to his aid. But even Saint Fan Emperor looked disturbed upon hearing that howl. Chapter 1239 Little Silver has come to save his master. The howling sounded from afar, but its carrier was quickly closing the distance. When the howling came to an abrupt end, a creature emerged from the brush of the nearby forest. Little Silver Hansen was delighted to see his past companion leap into the fray. Its elegant fur was just like Hansen remembered, and it brought him immense joy just to see the scruffy animal come with lightning flickering across its body. Truth be told, though, the title, Little Silver, was no longer suitable. In his time away from Hansen, the silver fox had grown to become a giant, almost wolf-like fox. It had ten electrified fox tails that crackled and sparked with an intensity that looked as if it could tear the dimension apart. Saint Fan was visibly disturbed when he saw it. But Hansen was exuberantly happy, and rightly so. His companion hadn't just returned, he had come back with a grand amount of power. The significance of its tails told them it had either opened nine gene locks, or quite possibly, ten. The silver fox swung its tail after appearing, as a bolt of lightning was fired towards Saint Fan. Saint Fan did not want the lightning to touch him, so he swung Han Sen and Xie Qing King together as a me shield. Boom. The silver lightning hit Han Sen and Xie Qing King and the looks on their faces were the distorted and wild expectation of a sudden death that was about to strike them. They were unable to avoid the lightning, but when they got hit, they noticed it wasn't a bolt meant to harm them. It healed them. Their relief was immense, and the healing power they received equaled the power of the Holy Rhino at the very least. When the lightning came into contact with Saint Fan's body, though, the Emperor let out a shrill shriek of pure agony. The lightning seared the skin off his entire body and made him smoke. At that precise moment, Hansen and Xie Qing King noticed they had been separated from Saint Fan. The lightning attack had left Saint Fan's body charred and burned, and the wounds looked irreparable. He tried to heal himself, but try as he might, he was unable to. Little Silver wasn't letting up on his master's aggressor, though. He pumped up the charge and continued frying Saint Fan. In response, the scorched spirit tried to use a white light in defense. The powers of the two looked to be equal and it wasn't immediately clear who would win. The Silver Fox did not stop casting, and the holy light of Saint Fan's shield had grown in volume and intensity to equal a small silver sun. There was no explosion, but the existence of the greenery around them flickered violently, as if there was a switch that operated time periods. One moment, the greenery would be in full, verdant bloom. The next, a scorched, charred hellscape. It switched between the two rapidly and made for an awe-inducing sight. Hansen's energy felt disturbed as he witnessed this. He wanted nothing more than to leave, feeling dwarfed by the gargantuan forces that battled before him. Everyone, focus on felling the remaining spirits and super creatures. Hansen called, running into battle against Saint Fan's army. Now, Saint Fan had been left to deal with a being that was his equal. He was left to fight with the Silver Fox, and he couldn't be distracted. Under the pressure put on him by the Electric Fox, he wouldn't have the time to resurrect anything that died. Hansen and Xie Chang King laid waste to the remaining forces with ease, all except for the Holy Rhino. But Hansen thought it odd. Despite what he killed, Hansen did not receive a single announcement. This made him frown. Even if the foes he had routed could be resurrected, death, no matter how temporary, should yield him an announcement of some kind. This must have meant Saint Fan did not resurrect them on the field of battle and that he must have done something before he came to fight. Well, that's a new trick. I wonder what he did, exactly. Hansen weighed the mystery in his mind. But Hansen also felt a streak of relief. If Saint Fan truly had the power of resurrecting spirits and creatures, it was almost too frightening a thing to comprehend. Saint Fan was not invincible in the Third God's Sanctuary, despite his immense amount of power. Even he had a limit. 
Then, Hansen suddenly heard the boisterous spirit scream aloud once more. It looked like he had failed to withstand the power of Little Silver's lightning. What did Little Silver do to become so strong? He must have eaten more than the nine-tailed fox's geno essence I let him have. He must have unearthed some fairly nifty treasure, Hansen thought. But the silver fox and all the super creatures on Ghost Mountain had all disappeared without a trace, so he thought something fairly more substantial had taken place, as well. St. Fan shouted, and turning to look, Hansen saw a lot of strange light beam right into him. From out of St. Fan, a snake head, lion body, and spider claws were all beginning to grow. Hansen said, all these creatures were a part of him already? They didn't resurrect, they were just birthed by him. Now, all the super creatures and king spirits of the field became one with Saint Fan. His body became stronger, and it made Little Silver's glow look fainter. The silver fox looked like he was having a hard time keeping up the constant discharge of electricity. Saint Fan was becoming more powerful than they thought could be possible, as he grew to encompass a mishmash of all those different creatures. The silver lightning was no longer enough to keep him at bay. Water can extinguish fire, but if the fire is too strong, not even water can help. Chapter 1240, Three Life Tree St. Fan's holy light continued to expand, and the light that had previously suppressed him was dwarfed and had to pull away. Thunder of Life Very good. If you become a part of me, I will obtain your powers, too. St. Fan was talking like a madman. St. Fan was able to heal himself, but not anyone else. That was why he valued the rhino so much. They were both of a holy element, but if St. Fan combined with the rhino, he could not use it to heal others. The silver fox's ability of healing was of a different element, and if St. Fan consumed little silver, he could overcome this hurdle. St. Fan had a wide array of wretched powers bubbling within him, and he used it all to fight back the silver lightning. But with the strength starting to prove itself supreme, little silver began to struggle, and St. Fan was inching closer and closer to the furry fighter. The silver fox did all he could to strengthen his thunder, but nothing he did could prohibit the lurching approach of St. Fan. We have to do something. We can't just let him bully that fox. Xie Qing King exclaimed. Unfortunately, there was nothing they could realistically do. Nothing they could do worked on St. Fan, and the last thing they wanted was to become glued to him. Hansen saw something weird about St. Fan, but he wasn't sure what it was. Seeing St. Fan get closer to the Silver Fox, though, Hansen still did not activate his Super King Spirit Mode to help. Boom. Boom. St. Fan's hideous body, if it could even be called that, was sickening to see. It resembled little more than a hulking biomass, whose footsteps rocked the earth with each step. Half an hour later, St. Fan had managed to come directly before the Silver Fox. With one of the snakes that protruded from his body, he tried to snatch the Silver Fox. Little Silver, come back. Hansen shouted. The silver fox heard Hansen's command, and then suddenly its size shrank. It leaped onto Hansen's shoulder, taking back its rightful spot where his master had severely missed him. Saint Fan turned around to look at Hansen and his companions. Many of the mouths across his body opened to say, good, you've all lined up to offer yourselves up for my consumption. You must earnestly wish me to become a demigod, but be good and queue up single file, would you? After that, St. Fan began his approach towards them all. It was a terrifying thing to behold. Snowball turned into a ball and ran off, but he wasn't the only one. They all fell back together, acknowledging their foe was now far too strong. St. Fan Emperor, before you try and consume us all, can I ask you two questions? Hansen did not wait for a response, and he immediately asked, How did you return to the second god's sanctuary for the rhino? All the mouths on St. Fan opened to answer, that is the ability of an emperor shelter. They all have different abilities, and mine provided this one. When triggered, you can open a gate that leads you to the second god sanctuary. I did not break through space, and it was the rhino who opened the gate. That gate led to an emperor shelter, which just so happened to be mine. Hansen was disappointed with this answer. He thought he could move his mother and Yin into the third god sanctuary with safety. Second question, why do you attack us? I fail to believe all this is purely in the desire for revenge, Hansen said. I do not need to explain anything to you, St. Fan said, preparing to absorb him. It is because of that tree, isn't it? Hansen said. St. Fan asked, you saw it? Yes, I did. I saw three fruits upon its branches. 
One of the fruits contained a twin knight, Hansen explained. Saint Fan looked surprised, and he asked, Has it matured yet? Now Hansen understood Saint Fan's rush to do battle was not for revenge, but for the tree that resided in Thunderhell's shelter. Hansen also knew now that it was a three-life tree. He did not know what the other fruits were, though. Do you know what the other two fruits are that grow on the three-life tree? Hansen asked, but he was ignored. Saint Fan simply moved forward and tried to attack. The silver fox used lightning to break the power it had expelled towards Hans Sr. But Saint Fan had grown incredibly strong, and although the attack had been stayed, the malformed spirit himself could not be stopped. His approach continued. For some reason, his powers felt unlimited, but also weaker. Hansen flapped his wings and dodged another attack. He stood in front of the hideous body and said, Look at yourself, before trying to kill us. Ugh, what game are you trying to play now? Saint Fan said. He knew the extent of his powers and knew how wretched he actually appeared, but he just continued trying to attack. Look at yourself. Look at your body. Are you afraid I will assault you? Hansen asked, evading the strike. Saint Fan was not afraid of any possible assault Hansen could muster, and he had more than one pair of eyes now. He took control of the snake and let it out to get a better view of himself, but what he saw shocked him. He said, impossible, 